12 and 1 Ball State and a 10 win Tulsa team that has the nation's number two scoring offense. Hi everybody alongside Andre Ware. I'm Dave Pash. Glad you could be with us. Well it's been a great bowl season so far Dre and the water cooler talk may be even more interesting now with Texas winning last night and of course Utah. Yeah with the performance the Longhorns put on they're going to toss their names wow. right into that national championship race of day as they uh, defeated Ohio State last night in grand, grand fashion. But how dare we talk national yeah. championship without throwing Utah in the mix and under undefeated football team that had a fabulous season. Ball State was this close to an undefeated season, 12 and 0 in the regular year but then fell apart in the conference championship game. Yeah, you know, you talk about uh, Ball State and just a magical season going 12 and 1 on their first 12 games and the last undefeated regular season for Ball State 1965 and you, you talk about winning the West Division. They were Western Division champs, the first Mac West title in school history. And then uh, you, you, lo you lose to Buffalo in the Mac Championship. They are ready to get into this ball game tonight. Tulsa ready as well. Eight no start for the Golden Hurricane and back to back losses found a way to rebound from that and get into their conference championship game. And then in similar uh, fashion with Ball State. Tulsa turned it over in their loss to East Carolina seven times. Well, jumped out 8-0 and oh, and then lost the next two. Just an average margin of victory by almost 30 points going in with those eight wins. And then they lose to Arkansas, my alma mater, the University of Houston, who put up 70 points on them. Then they go to the Conference USA Championship game. They turn it over a bunch in that football game. Still had a chance at the end. But Tulsa looking to get things turned around right now tonight. Andre, overall, a banner year for both Tulsa and Ball State. They celebrated that last night with a GMAC Bowl Parade in Mardi Gras style in Mobile, the home of Mardi Gras. And one of these teams will be celebrating again tonight. Kickoff is next. Ball State looking for its 13th win. Tulsa trying for a school record 11th win behind senior quarterback David Johnson and Nate Davis may be his final game talk that he could forego his senior season and head to the National Football League as Ben Roethlisberger did five years ago winning this game playing great in that game and then going off to the National Football League and Nate Davis is an exciting player and there's David Johnson the quarterback for Tulsa had a a game unlike any that he had in the Conference USA Championship game, but uh, he's looking to really kind of turn things around tonight. Tulsa head coach Todd Graham just signed a 10 year extension with the Golden Hurricane, flirted with some other schools. Reports that he talked with Auburn, but said that he wants to stay at Tulsa. Done a great job there so far. You know, does that make it better like when you sign that contract extension on New Year's Day? I mean, that kind of like, you know, does something, doesn't it? Some kind of karma there. He will stay in Parrish. His first game is the head coach at Ball State. He's replacing Brady Hoke, who left for San Diego State. And Parrish, a finalist for the Broyles Award, which goes to the top assistant in college football. Done a great job as the offensive coordinator for Ball State. Tornado watch in effect about... Uh, for about another hour and uh, 71 degrees and isolated thunderstorms in the forecast we've had some showers off and on throughout the day but right now just wind here in Mobile hopefully we're going to get lucky and we're going to see two exciting offenses if you like offensive football this is one to keep your eyes on two quarterbacks that have had exceptional seasons with runners and uh, Terry and Adams as well as uh, Michael Lewis Two, uh, two guys that can certainly get it done and help their uh, help their respective offensive units. Tulsa won the toss and is deferred, so it will kick it away to Ball State. Here's the outstanding junior running back, McQuail Lewis, school record, over 1,700 rushing yards, fourth in the country in rushing this year. Corey Jeffers will boot it away for Tulsa. Toriel Gibson and B.J. Hill back for Ball State. It'll be Gibson running it out for the Cardinals. And Gibson hit at the 21-yard line and dumped. Charles Davis with the special teams tackle. 
The Mac Offensive Player of the Year, Nate Davis, one of the best quarterbacks in college football this year. Yeah, he's a great competitor, a great leader, and he gets players around him to play above their skill level. The guy that he'll depend on, Briggs Osborne, a receiver, just a freshman who has really stepped up this season, and they're going to need some heat off the edges, and Kenny Meeks is a uh, outside linebacker that should provide plenty of that for Ball State. We'll see how Davis responds after that tough going in the MAC title game. They'll run it on first down to McQuayle Lewis, and he gets to the 25, so a gain of about three. The starting offense at the top of your screen for Ball State, 22nd right now in the BCS standings, got as high as 12th, their best ever. Come out trying to run the football with Lewis, who's not a big guy, 5'6", and you know, there are a lot of good five six running backs around the country and one in Darren Sproles who he'll Markel Lewis will kind of remind you of throughout this ball game hides behind big offensive lineman and all of a sudden he's on the second level of the defense Davis to throw on second down and has an open man Lewis Johnson first down near midfield Boy, that's why right there the scouts really like Nate Davis the arm strength the uh, anticipation of the throw and that's one that's got to be gone you're anticipating a receiver coming into a window and you let the ball just rip he has got he can make all the throws has all the arm strength you will ever need and a smart smart player at that position 67 percent completion percentage for the Bel Air Ohio native on the season. 21 yards in that previous play back to Lewis on the ground can't shake Roy Roberts and Roberts eventually gets him down after a gain of one the Tulsa defensive starters at the top of your screen they run a 3-3-5 defense yes that 3-3-5 stack they like to bring outside pressure on third down and long so they'll try to hold up on first and second down and then bring a little show you man free in the secondary and maybe bring some exotic kind of blitzes uh, from that look they just really try to confuse a quarterback with that look all game long. Davis on second and nine with a pump and the deep throw. But way too long for Briggs Orsbon, true freshman who had 65 catches on the year but could not get away from the defender. We're talking to Keith Patterson, the defensive coordinator for Tulsa. So the keys to this one defensively, stop the run, which on first down they were able to do that with Lewis, and then create some long yardage situations. And right now, they've got him in third down and nine, exactly the right recipe for this Tulsa defense. So they've got him exactly where they want him. Although Ball State was ninth in the country, and third down conversions this year, but this is a third knock. Yeah, 50% isn't bad. <laughs> Go to that pistol look. Davis in trouble, and he fumbled the ball. And it's recovered by Tulsa. Unfortunately for Davis, pick it up where he left off in the MAC championship game with the fumbles. Yeah, I don't know if it's the gloves or what, but you would think that you'd be able to grip it a little bit better. But he is definitely having some problems. And it just, you know, T Tanner Antel, the outside linebacker, gets his left hand right on the football, pokes it out of there. And Tulsa going to be set up with their first drive with some excellent field position. Moten Hopkins with the recovery. So first down for Tulsa at the Ball State 41. They run it to A.J. Whitmore, and he gets about three on the first play for the Golden Hurricane. David Johnson, 43 touchdown passes on the year, 18 interceptions, five of those coming in one game, the Conference USA title game. And just kind of looked lost in that game. He had a fumble to go along with it, but looking to bounce back tonight. And Johnson. Facing some pressure, but able to get the pass away to Adams. And close to a first down, Haynes on the stop. Well, here are impact players. A.J. Whitmore with the absence of Brennan Marion. He's going to play a bigger role for Tulsa. Demarius Johnson is a guy that can really get down the field. Just a true freshman. And Charles Clay. If there's an NFL body on this Tulsa offense, it's that young man. You talked about A.J. Whitmore being an impact player. Here he is running Tulsa's version of a Wildcat. 
By that time, Ball State all over it. Minimal gain there on first and ten as Alex Knipp, a junior safety, comes up and makes the hit. He's their most versatile player at wide receiver, and maybe uh, on the entire offensive unit. He's a guy that accounted uh, for over 11,000 yards of total offense in high school. And Johnson back in the game now at quarterback. Well, just so fast, the pace of Tulsa. Johnson with time to throw. Wide open, touchdown! True freshman Damaris Johnson with his 10th touchdown catch. Well, when you turn the football over, that's what you want when you come over with come come up with a turnover. Look at the anticipation of David Johnson. Ball's in the air just as Damaris Johnson is making his break from one Johnson to another. Extra point. Tacked on by Jared Tracy. So Tulsa makes the most of the Nate Davis fumble. David Johnson's 44th touchdown pass, and Tulsa strikes first. Championship game in Detroit. All was going well early for Ball State, but then this fumble by Nate Davis was returned for a touchdown by Buffalo. And then Davis had a couple of more fumbles. And they end up losing 42 to 24. And then Davis picking up where he left off in that game, fumbling on his first shot. He's kind of trying to avoid the, the rush, and they bring the outside linebacker. Tanner Antel, he creates the fumble. He come up with it, short field for Tulsa. And you talk about uh, shaking the demon from, from you, David Johnson. He takes con total control and shakes off his bad game in the Conference USA Championship with a nice strike to Damaris Johnson to get Tulsa out in front early in this ball game. Yeah, his first pass was an interception against East Carolina in the Conference USA Championship game. He completes his first two passes tonight, the second one going for a touchdown. Well, he just wasn't himself in that game, but uh, certainly looks like the player that uh, played for Tulsa all season long early here. Here's Gibson on the return for Ball State to the 25-yard line, dropped by Roy Roberts. Let's well, say good evening now to Reese Davis in the studio. Hello, Dave. Andre on the family of networks right now on ESPN2. They're in a timeout in East Lansing, Michigan State, on top of Ohio State, 43 to 31. Spartans are starting to hit their stride a little bit. And a great Big East game going on on ESPNU. UConn has now moved ahead of number 22, West Virginia, 38 to 36. Stanley Robinson in double figures with 10 for the Huskies. Well, not a good two-day run for Ohio State, is it? No. <laughs> a loss last night to Texas and then uh, losing tonight to Michigan State. And by the way, what game in the Big East is not a good game this year? In college basketball, here's Lewis on the carry. Picks up a couple. Tanner Antle, who forced that fumble on the previous possession, comes up with a stop. I'm talking to Stan Paris. He said their keys don't turn the football over and be balanced. Well, they've kind of accomplished one of those things. The balance part, it seems to be there. They're trying to run by Quell and Lewis a little bit, as well as mix some passes in with Nate Davis. But the big turnover that led to the Tulsa touchdown pass. That's one that they have yet to accomplish. So they've got to get a handle on those turnovers. Davis hit as he delivers. And minimal gain on the reception by Lewis Johnson. But well, we're talking earlier about basketball. And tomorrow night we've got a college basketball NBA doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, Stephen Curry and Davidson taking on number two Duke, followed by Denver and Miami. And the interesting thing about these games. In the Heat Nuggets game, even though Carmelo Anthony won't be playing, Dick Vitale will be calling that game. And meanwhile, Tariko Van Gundy and MJ Mark Jackson will be at Duke. And I'm only going to fit all three of those guys in that booth. <laughs> That's going to be fun. Fun for uh, both crews. Here's Davis on third down, able to find his check down Lewis. And it's a first down for Ball State. Lewis to the 42, pushed out by Roberts. Deep, deep zone drops by Tulsa there, which allowed for Michael Lewis to slip out of the backfield, just kind of hang out along the sideline. And as Nate Davis goes through his progression, he finds his playmaker, 
A smaller guy at 5'6", 184 pounds, but he doesn't play small, Dave. You know, sometimes uh, those are the guys that are the toughest to bring down. They're the hardest to find if you're a defensive player. On first down, Davis with a ton of time. Again, throwing underneath, and Orsbon picks up nine. Right, Art Orsbon's a guy that has really stepped up in the absence of Dante Love, a receiver that went out to a spinal injury early in September. And uh, it's been uh, Orsbon who's, who's really responded well, a true a freshman. He had 13 of his 65 receptions, 141 yards to go along with it in the MAC championship game. So had a big game, but just couldn't stop turning the football over. Second down and short. For Ball State. Cardinals trying to win their first ever bowl game. This is their fifth all time appearance in the postseason. Lewis to the outside has the first down and then scoots out of play at the 43 yard line. Well, this is the scene pregame with Nate Davis and, and Dante Love. It's kind of playing a little toss and it's kind of good to see Dante Love. Moving around, getting around well, and responding after uh, after that injury. And even though he's been told by doctors that his football career is over after he was nearly paralyzed with that cervical spine fracture, that game he talked about against Indiana, he says he would still like to come back and play some form of athletic. Said he might even want to try baseball. Just a phenomenal athlete. Davis with a ton of time. It overthrows Madaris Grant, the intended receiver. Good coverage by Roy Roberts downfield for Tulsa. Well, you have talked about Roy Roberts a, a couple of times in this game early, and he's you know, a guy that's really fought through some injuries this year, finally healthy and was healthy for the Conference USA championship game. He's their best cover guy. Strong, physical player. And they're at strong safety and will flat out hit you when you come across the middle. He's already got four tackles in this game. Lewis on second down, cut down. After maybe a yard, Mike Bryant, leading tackler for the Tulsa defense, made the stop. Usually teams try to test this 3-3-5. Three, three, You're thinking just three defensive linemen in there with three linebackers, and the way to do it is to run the football right at it. But, you know, they are so fast and so quick, the linebackers being the strength of this defense, led by that guy right there, Mike Bryant, 112 tackles on the season, leads this team in a defense that can get to the football. Davis on third down and long in trouble, fumbled again. And it's recovered again by Tulsa. Guess who? Brian comes up with it, and it was forced by Cornelius Arnick. It's everybody kind of contributing to the party, and you got there's a clock in the back of a quarterback's head, and that's what Stan Paris is telling him right now. That clock goes off, you get about a hint, maybe a, a second one, and the ball's got to go. You feel things collapsing around you. That football's got to come out. Andre, I don't know if you ever went through a stretch like that as a quarterback in your playing career where you have all these fumbles, but at some point, does it become almost like a Chuck Knobloch thing where it's it's almost like trying to throw to second base and you're having problems with it? As uh, Terry and Adams gets maybe two yards on that first down carry. Dave, I don't recall having that happen. Four fumbles in the last two games, and, and I wouldn't know how to shake it, really, if, <laughs> if it did start to happen, other than just the football out. I mean, you get back, you get set, read things, and the ball's got to come out. The longer you hold it, bad things can happen. Well, it says four fumbles. It's, it's really six as Johnson gets sacked there because there were two botched snaps, although you certainly could blame Davis's center, Dan Gerberry, on uh, those botched snaps in the MAC title game. You could maybe attribute it to holding the football a little low where guys are coming in around your waist and your knees and just kind of squatting at the football as they're lunging for the quarterback and, you know, maybe carrying the football a little bit low. Uh, it's kind of attributing to Nate Davis in the fumbles. Johnson sacked again. Dropped by Robert Eddins. So the Cardinal defense comes up big after the turnover. The sophomore from Crockett High School in Detroit, Michigan. 
responding for the defense and getting them out of a bind. That turnover uh, just kind of goes by the wayside. The defense stepping up for Ball State. And Nate Davis going to give him another shot here. Now you just got to shake it off. If you're Nate, you had the conversation with Stan Paris, the coach, just go out and play football. Michael Such booting it away to B.J. Hill. Hill with a nice move at the 20-yard line. Another move at the 30. And out to the 38. And Roy Roberts made the tackle, but a great return. So we'll see how Nate Davis responds on this next drive after two fumbles. One of them cost him. The last one didn't. Mobile, Alabama is the home to the oldest organized carnival celebrations dating back to 1703. This is the Mobile Carnival Museum, birthplace of Mardi Gras, first carnival celebration in 1711. Place to actually go shop for uh, Mardi Gras items, huh? Get your car costume. Did you get yours there last night? Uh huh. <laughs> Ball State. Keeps it on the ground and doesn't put it on the ground, although two fumbles for Ball State so far. Corey Sykes on the carry. This is a pregame warm up with Nate Davis. He was out about an hour and a half, just kind of throwing, getting the feel of the football. And you see the gloves there that he wears. Doesn't really even grip the laces, just kind of grabs the football. And here are the fumbles early in the football game for Nate Davis, feeling the pressure. Ball comes out. Second possession. He's back again. Ball looks to be high. He drops it down, and that allows for a defender to kind of get his hand on it. But how long has it been just a hand on the football game? Never really believed in the gloves. I know some guys think it actually helps with grip. Davis here completes it to Orsbon, and he's pushed out of bounds by John Destin. You know, the other thing, Andre, is because you talked about the fact that he grips the other side of the ball that some well, now say. Now he's gone yeah. away from that glove on the right hand, and you see it right there. It's minus, minus the glove on the throwing hand. Hmm. What about the idea of throwing it on the other side of the ball without the laces? Does that impact your grip? Now, Troy Aikman did it for many years and uh, just kind of threw his way right into the Hall of Fame and had a, certainly had a fine college career along with it. So I don't, I don't think that it matters where you grab it. It's just about holding it high, especially when you get in a crowded area. The NFL scouts are saying they would not mess with Davis's grip. Good throw there, finds Orsbon who's loose. Inside the 25 yard line before Roy Roberts catches up to him at the 22. Well, nothing wrong with gripping the football right there. I think it's just carry it high, step up, and get it out in rhythm. And watch the rhythm of Nate Davis here. The drop back steps up in the pocket, bang. Ball comes out on time and allows for the playmakers. And you see the delivery right there. That ball is tight. It doesn't matter that if he has the laces or not. You can throw it, Dave. You can throw it. 33 yard pass play. Third catch for Orsbon. McQuayle Lewis trying to get outside and again. Roy Roberts is there. The guy's got seven tackles already in this game for Tulsa. Yeah, he is quick, hides behind that uh, big offensive line, and then all of a sudden you find him on the second level of the defense, and he brings a little punch with him as well. You see him there. He's not a small, little bitty guy, he's built kind of compact. So he's already into your shoulder pads. You better get low when you're talking about tackling him. Well, you play with a little guy with the Detroit Lions who seem to be okay oh, yeah. running the football he's in the NFL. Little, Barry he's a Sanders. little taller than uh, Quill Lewis, though. <laughs> Davis gets away from pressure. Davis cuts it back to the middle of the field and scores. Touchdown, Ball State. right there that shows you the competitiveness and the leadership of Nate Davis nothing there just going to pull it down and this is what the scouts like about him he's a smart runner nothing's available you pull it down and make plays with your legs put your team into the end zone and hopefully tie this baby up Ian McGarvey with his 72nd consecutive an extra point made the tie it at seven. Nate Davis his fifth rushing touchdown. Ball State would love to have him back next year. Who knows? This could be his final game. He's a junior, could lead for the National Football League.
to Mobile, Alabama for the GMAC Bowl. We're tied at seven, Ball State and Tulsa. And we're being told that the tornado watch that was in effect for a good three, four hours is uh, no longer in effect. You know, Mobile is, is facing moderate damage uh, being on the Gulf Coast from uh, previous hurricanes, but uh, tornado watch is over, though we're being told that uh, a rain band is in the area, so I hope it didn't rain or lightning tonight. Meanwhile, Nate Davis, a great bounce back for this kid who fumbled four times, including the two botched snaps in the MAC title game and then two fumbles already in this one. Well, you know, if this is his going away party, he certainly doesn't want to go uh, move on from Ball State with this kind of the early performance on his resume. He wanted to shake that, get his team back in this ball game, and I think he's done just that, kind of shaking the fumble problem and look for him to go uh, to play well going forward. I mean, what's going through his mind, Andre, as a quarterback when you're dealing with that? People well, some, talk and scouts have been talking yeah. to agents, all that stuff as well. Sometimes you can't really put a finger on why certain things happen to you during your during a football game and the fumbles. You can't really put a finger on it, but you can kind of play through them, and that seems to be where Nate Davis is headed. Here's Johnson on the return for Tulsa, able to get to the outside. He's got great speed. And pushed to the boundary at the 40-yard line by Trey Lewis. He is a guy that uh, you felt like they had to have someone step in for Brennan Marion. Their top receiver averaged just under 26 yards of reception with eight touchdowns this year out on the final play of the Conference USA Championship game with a knee injury in ACL. We had surgery uh, a few weeks ago on that, but someone offensively had to step up for that young man, and so far it's Damaris Johnson. Yeah, two of the three players on offense that were first team conference USA are out for this game. Here's a reverse to A.J. Whitmore and nice ankle tackle at the line of scrimmage by B.J. Hill. So maybe a yard on that reverse for Whitmore, but Marion is out. First team conference USA guard Justin Morrissey is out, which makes Gus Malzahn's job a little bit more difficult. Couple that with the fact that he's the Auburn offensive coordinator and he's splitting <laughs> duties right now. And uh, probably tough to game plan. And we got two of the three first team all conference players for Tulsa out of this ball game. Still a highly explosive offense. Johnson unloads and it's incomplete. Dropped by Trey Johnson. Well, How difficult was... right now for this Tulsa football team when you got Gus Malzahn, who's going to be the offensive coordinator at Auburn, calling plays tonight, and Herb Hand, who's going to be the OC next year. In waiting. Well, it's uh, you know it's kind of one of those where you're in the gray area. You don't know if you want to give Herb Hand more of a responsibility. You don't know if you want to stay status quo where uh, Gus Malzahn's calling most of the passing plays and Herb's calling the, the run stuff, or do you want to go ahead and get Herb used to calling plays in a game and get him a rhythm as a play caller? Setting up the screen on third down to Adams. He has blockers out in front and he's got the first down for the 45-yard line. Well, Tulsa's not the only team, Andre, that is going this route. Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator at Florida, will call plays in the BCS championship game, even though he's going to be the head coach of Mississippi State. Do you like the route that Tulsa and Florida are going? No, I, I tell you what, I didn't like it last year when Mike Sherman took the job, was a, an assistant with the Texans, and was splitting time at Texas A&M, and they made a duties uh, at, uh, with the Texans. Dave Johnson fooled everybody all the way to the 15 yard line. <laughs> he fooled me because I thought Terry and Adams had the football and it was a nice play fake. I think the entire defense of Ball State went with the fake to Terry and Adams. You know, first down, they like to run the football. This is a team that averages over 254 yards on the ball on the ground. And then right there, it's going to go right into the hedges there, David Johnson. They go Wildcat and they hand it off to Johnson. And he gets slowed up there by Trey Vice on that reverse, so gain of a couple yards. But to go back to your question about guys splitting, you know, I, I'm under the, the impression or the influence that if you take a job, you go ahead and you go do it. Because it's just almost impossible to do both. And you've got to recruit, and the thing about it is getting behind and recruiting, uh, especially if you're going to be a head coach somewhere, that could cost you the first year, maybe even two, three years down the line when you get it, get behind there. Johnson overthrows his intended receiver, Trey Johnson, in the end zone. 
to bring up third down. Right now, Ball State tied with Tulsa, but the Golden Hurricane driving as Ball State seeks its first ever bowl victory. Ahead, Andre will wear it out. What to do with Utah in an undefeated season for the Utes. And later, we'll talk announcer swap for the college basketball NBA doubleheader tomorrow. It's a new reality show. Forget wife swap, you got announcer swap. That pass tip at the line on third down by Brandon Crawford. So it'll bring up fourth and eight. And, you know, Todd Graham, he's not afraid to go for it here. He was backed up on his 28 yard line in one game and went for it on a fourth and one. But it uh, looks like here he's going to elect to take the points and try to uh, reestablish the lead in this ballgame. You know, speaking of announcer swap, Andre, I think I'd like to have you maybe call horse racing or tennis or something. <laughs> you do an announcer swap that way? Uh, no. I enjoy horse racing, but uh, I'm not going to call any races. Here's Tracy from 31. And it's 10 7 Tulsa. Late in the first of the GMAC Bowl. Many things make the University of Tulsa the private university for forward thinking students. An academically challenging curriculum, innovative multidisciplinary programs, faculty and students committed to learning, Division I-A athletics, and a beautiful residential campus. Experience for your... Tulsa leading by three over Ball State. You know, we were talking before the break about the fact that Gus Malzahn is splitting duties right now as the offensive coordinator here right. and at Auburn, and he's going to leave, obviously, after this bowl game. Meanwhile, you get Stan Parrish, the head coach at Ball State, replacing Brady Hoke, who was the head coach this year but left for San Diego State. So Ball State, the antithesis of Tulsa, although Parrish told us that many of the coaches on this staff will join Hoke in San Diego after this game. Yeah, he wouldn't uh, really give us a... Uh which coaches were gonna were gonna join Coach Hulk there, Coach Hulk in San, at San Diego State, but uh, you know that's one where you go ahead and get a jump start on a job and recruiting, and I think that was the, the right decision. Here's Gibson for Ball State, and Gibson out to the 30-yard line. Now you got to match points with points if you're Nate Davis and uh, this Ball State offense, and they certainly can. Can put points on the board. Average 36 points a game this year. Kind of a quick strike offense themselves. One of four undefeated regular seasons. Ball State, Utah, Alabama, and Boise State. And two of the previous three lost. Obviously, Alabama losing to Utah and Boise State falling to TCU. When they don't turn it over or fumble it. They still might be undefeated. Running play on first down, Corey Sykes doesn't get much there, maybe two. Mike Bryan on the tackle for Tulsa. Stan Paris, they're now head coach, offensive coordinator, went down, visited with Gus Malzahn about a day and a half and just kind of wanted to seek some new ways to use their star receiver, Dante Love, and now it's uh, Briggs Osborne. Osborne. Horsbond, I'm sorry, the uh, slot receiver who's kind of stepped into that role, but they wanted to figure out new ways, some new wrinkles in this Ball State offense. So now it's kind of ironic these two teams wind up facing each other here in the bowl game. Davis on the rollout, shows off his arm there. That pass was right there, but unable to hang on to it was Darius Hill, normally sure-handed yeah. tight end. And leads him in touchdown receptions with seven. Not a good at-the-line blocking type tight end. Maybe one to add a little more weight this offseason. I mean, it, it, over uh, after the season's over. His butt was first team all Mac and certainly knows how to catch the football. But at 6'6, 236 with hands, you get a shot at the next level. Remember Antonio Gates came out of the Mac conference, essentially as a basketball player, and made it as a tight end in the National Football League. He's got receiver type speed too. Davis on third and seven. That pass nearly intercepted and then almost caught on the redirection. But Orsbon was out of bounds. John Flanders broke it up for Tulsa. Orsbon's another sure-handed guy. 
you'll see it right here along the sideline. Good concentration. They break on the football, and Usbon comes up with it, but his body's like just sitting, laying on the line almost right there, out of bounds. So Chris Miller, one of the best punters in the country all four seasons. At Ball State will boot it away. Second team all Mac performer himself this year. And his first team his first three years. As we say that a port kick but good coverage by Ball State as Trey Johnson gets dumped immediately. Josh Howard down there for Ball State. Well, it's been a great bowl season so far. USC dominating. The Rose Bowl presented by City. We talked about Utah and what else Frank Beamer's done at Virginia Tech. How about Rutgers after that one and five start? Donald Brown running wild for Utah. I'm impressed with those two. Utah as well as Virginia Tech. Looking at Utah, nobody gave him a shot. They go in against the Alabama team that was ranked number one a good portion of the season. And they come away with a victory. And then Virginia Tech with a lot of graduates on the defensive side of the football. And Frank Beamer turning in a nice season. Adams gets a handful spun down by Andrew Putoff. Look at some other headlines. Ed Ogeron's uh, recruits playing great for Houston Nutt. Ole Miss beating Texas Tech. Only one win for the Big Ten. That was Iowa in the outback bowl as Johnson slides to the 49-yard line. Got the first down. And six and six teams going six and three in the bowl games in the Pac-10 undefeated in the postseason. Yeah, I think that's the surprise right there. You talk about the Pac-10 being down, but they took care of business in this bowl season. So uh, undefeated the Pac-10 in bowls this year. There's Whitmore running. The Wildcat pitches to Johnson. This time it works. The last time Johnson didn't get any yards. This time he picks up 11 and a first down. You just kind of watch this. You kind of get it set up. You're going to wall it off in the back back here. So you're going to get a block here, the motion here, and the receiver coming back around. And Johnson with a nice little toss. You just want to give him something. And you see Jody Wiley, the uh, center there, kind of wall things off which allows for uh, Damaris Johnson to turn the corner for a big, big play. A lot of ball handling on that play. And Johnson going deep. Man down there. But the pass overthrown. Slick Shelley blew by the defender. But Johnson overshot him. We're just a little bit too far for a guy that can really track him down. 6'4", 200 pounds, and a guy that transferred in from Tennessee, Slick Shelley. And he is wide open. This is one that uh, you get a couple of those a game, and you need to hit them when they present themselves. Well, Look maybe the win. Yeah. Likely the final play here of the first quarter. Johnson was looking deep and tried to hit Shelly, and again overthrew. That ends the first quarter here at the GMAC Bowl. Tulsa leading Ball State by three. Welcome back to Lad Peeble Stadium in the 2009 GMAC Bowl. They pass Andre Ware. Tulsa on top of Ball State 10 to 7 as we start the second quarter. Third down and long inside the Ball State 40. Here's Johnson already a touchdown pass in the game finds Adams and he's going to come up well short of the first down Trey Lewis. Knocks him down after maybe a gain of two. Well, 40 snaps between the two teams of the first quarter. Seven special teams plays. I don't believe in chinkses, so I'll say it, Andre. No penalty flags. We're just trying to. Uh, you are jinxing it with uh, with saying no penalties, but Todd Graham, he's not afraid to go for it. It's fourth down and ten here, and was trying to just get about half of it on that down and distance. Maybe maybe quick kick here. A quick kick. Yep. He's backing up. 
Here it is. By the way, Ball State, the least penalized team in the country this year. Great punt. And deciding to field it inside the 10 is Hill. And he gets tackled at the eight-yard line. So bad starting field position for Ball State. Time now for Reese Davis in a sports center right now. All right, Dave, the saga continues at Boston College. According to reports, Jeff Jagodzinski has interviewed with the Jets. Now, no definite word on what that means at BC. All those sources have told ESPN's Joe Shea that means that Jags will be fired. Marvin Harrison will not be charged in an April shooting, a gun that allegedly belonged to him. Sports Center after the game. Stay current with ESPN News. All right, Race and Andre, obviously we don't have all the insight on the contract and what was discussed between Boston College Athletic Department and Jeff Jagosinski, but what are your thoughts on it? I just I just don't understand how a guy can't go and interview for a job. I mean, you know, if, if a, a job presented itself for the athletic director, I'm wondering if he would take the same stance that he's taken against his head coach when it pertains to him. Maybe Gene DiFilippo is a pretty sharp guy, pretty good reputation as that pass is overthrown. It was the uh, BCAD maybe trying to protect himself after uh, Tom O'Brien left for NC State. It just seems odd, and again, knowing yeah. that DiFilippo and how well respected he is, uh, just to not let a guy interview, you'd have to think there's more to it, perhaps something in the contract that would preclude Jagosinski from doing so. Not a bad year when you lose the number one overall pick or a uh, you know a top pick in Matt Ryan and, and the uh, rookie of the year. I mean, I mean, at that position, you lose a quarterback at that magnitude and still able to put together a fine season like they have. It's a credit to Jags. Yeah, they went to the eight, uh, ACC title game, lost to Virginia Tech. Davis in trouble there in the end zone, gets it away, incomplete. He's missed his last four passes. And they're able to get some pressure. This is where Tulsa, this, uh, this point on the field is when they like to bring a light, little bit of pressure. They get it with just the front three guys here. Luke Wilson Garrison right in kind of getting in the face of Nate Davis but uh, they'll bring some here on third down. This is where they really like to come after you especially right in inside your own 10 yard line. They'll keep it conservative and run Lewis trying to reverse field and didn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Tanner Antle. No fourth down, Ball State will have to kick. Tulsa going to get some pretty good field position here. Trey Johnson, their punt returner. Just any type of positive yard is going to be set up pretty good. Starting to sprinkle here in Mobile and the wind picking up. And we had a tornado watch for a few hours earlier tonight. Ended about 20 minutes ago. Miller can just unload and does a booming kick. Also had the wind at his back. Here's Johnson on the return, and he didn't even get to the 35. Hey, what a punt. Sixty three yard punt by Chris Miller a career long also had the help of the wind that is back. Tulsa leads Ball State 10 7. One thing that these children didn't get for Christmas as uh, the rain starts to fall a bit here in Mobile. Maybe Santa next year will deliver a couple of raincoats. And who's this? Uh, who are they saying hi, Dave? To is it you? Is it David Letterman? Is it Dave you know, Brown in the truck? Man, I hope that's not my fan club. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. I'm betting it's David Letterman. How about you that? You think? Oh yeah. yeah. Ball State great. Letterman, a huge a Ball State fan still. There's your fan club, Andre. <laughs> Colors. Maybe they're talking to Dave Johnson, the quarterback so. here for Tulsa. Four six but uh, has been able to complete one as of late. He does here, yep. finding Johnson out of the backfield, makes a great move on Trey Bice. Another spin all the way to the 45 of Ball State. Well, it felt like somebody had to take the place of Brennan Marion. They went to Damaris Johnson early on the big touchdown, and you're going to see it here, just a nice little flare pattern. Just give it to him right here, a little bubble screen, and now it's just what can you do with the football in open space? 
There's Jamad Williams on the call. He gets about four, tackled by Alex Knipp as we check in with Reese Davis in the studio. All right, Dave, got a couple of great basketball games going on in the family of networks right now. UConn and West Virginia. A.J. Price can't get it to go, but Jeff Adrian, always a tough guy doing work around the rim. Two-point lead right now for the fifth-ranked Huskies on the road, up by two. Ohio State is falling to Michigan State as well in the year. Well, that conference is going to be fun to watch this year. Down in the backfield is Charles Clay by Alex Knipp, so a loss of about five or six. Speaking of hoops, at 7 Eastern tomorrow, Stephen Curry and Davidson take on Duke with Mike Tirico, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson calling that game. Then at 9 Eastern, Miami and Denver, it'll be Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale calling that game. But no Carmelo Anthony out three to four weeks with that hand injury. Imagine Dickie V at the Pepsi Center. <laughs> Pass downfield by Johnson, complete to Damaris Johnson inside the 30-yard line. First down. We're right in the middle of the zone defense, and they gave Dave Johnson a lot of time, and it's a nice combination. You've called most of this game, Johnson and Johnson. Right here, watch this nice smooth delivery, working in the pocket, steps up and delivers a nice strike to Damaris Johnson. Inside handoff to Adams. And he gets planted after a gain of about two or three by Drew Duffin. Maybe with this announcer swap idea, we got to get Dickie V on college football. How about that? That would be fun. You talk about energy. We'd get a little energy, wouldn't we? I know he'll be watching the FedEx of BCS National Championship, listening to it on ESPN Radio. It's Florida gotta, in it, taking on be, Oklahoma. Yeah, got to be teams like these two. Ball State and Tulsa, up-tempo type team. Big hole for Adams inside the 10, down to the six-yard line before Alex Kniff is there for Ball State. He needs 93 yards to become Tulsa's all-time leading rusher. And like, look at the nice little hole that he's going to get behind Clint Anderson, who's starting at left guard today. Here's Adams again. Barrels to the one-yard line. Tulsa's number two in the country in scoring and in total offense. And looking for six more points here, second and goal. Going right into a heavy win, but it doesn't seem to be bothering the, the hurricane offense. Adams walks in, touchdown Tulsa. You mentioned Justin Morrissey, their best offensive lineman out of this game, but they go right behind big Clint Anderson, who's making the start at left guard. They move Kurt Puckett over to right guard in place of Justin Morrissey, but uh, still effective in the running game. So an eight play 67 yard drive and now Tracy tacks on one more to make it a 10 point. Tulsa Lee here in the 10th anniversary of the GMAC Bowl. Oysters turn away. Winslow's Oyster House, though, spectacular food. Best seafood gumbo ever. Thank you for coming in. I like seafood gumbo, but save the oysters. I'll uh, give you my portion. Meanwhile, the wind really picking up here. Could have 45 mile an hour gusts. We had a tornado watch that ended a little while ago. It's still 70 degrees. Very humid here in Mobile. The air's been blown around <laughs> in this one. Tracy, who just set the school record with that point after for scoring, he's got 282 career points, will kick off for the Golden Hurricane. He'll need a little bit of help here with that win picking up. Toriel Gibson back to receive, and he's standing at his 15-yard line because this kick is into the win. It'll be kept on the ground and still gets back to Gibson at the 15-yard line. Across the 30. And Tracy in on the tackle. Out near the 40-yard line. 
Let's take a look at today's AFWAC trivia Aflac. question. See what we got for you, Mr. Ware, today. Which state has the most bowl game winners this season? I know this one. Easy. It is. Oh, yeah. Do you know the number for yes. this state? What's the number? It's four. It's an, it's an easy one for me. Well, what do you think? I, I can give you a hint. You want a hint or you want the answer? I'll wait to give the answer later. I know it's four. I know it's not Florida, although Florida, if the Gators win the FedEx BCS National Championship against Oklahoma, will tie this state with four as Davis throws downfield to Darius Hill. First down to the Tulsa 40-yard line. It's a big tight end target. Just kind of dragging across and a couple of post routes. He's the shallower of the two. You're going to see him right here, and then post route coming from the outside to occupy the safety. Now it's just who does the safety jump? He stays deep, so it gives Nate Davis an opportunity to go to Darius Hill. 22-yard pass play. Davis really has calmed down since those two fumbles early. Again, a strike to Hill, and another ball state first down to the 25 before Mike Bryan makes the tackle. Check out, check out the play a couple of moments ago, and sometimes it takes a big guy a little time to get, get up to top speed, but there you see him once he catches it, sure hands. I mentioned earlier he leads him in touchdown receptions coming into this game with seven. Davis going to him again, this time overthrew him. Charles Davis was closing for Tulsa. Well, he was, Nate Davis was recruited by Coach Parrish. And when they recruited him, they hoped that he would turn into a program changer. Became the starting quarterback his fifth game of his freshman year, and I think he changed Ball State's program a little bit. Davis gets away from trouble and then throws it at the last second. It's picked off by Jake Destin. Davis was close to being over the line of scrimmage and should not have thrown that pass. Destin with the INT. Yeah, kind of threw it behind his intended receiver, and sometimes you just want, as a quarterback, once it comes off your hand, you're hoping the receiver just misses it because if he gets tipped in the middle of the field, right here trying to go to Orsbon, it gets tipped in the air and picked off. Now Justin Dest John Destin, now Tulsa with its second, actually third, turnover of the first half all by Davis two fumbles and the interception he had an interception and two fumbles along with two bot snaps with the center Dan Gerberry in that Mac title game loss to Buffalo I think it might be just a case of a, a good player trying to do a little bit too much and just got to settle in and play his game with uh, what he did to win 12 games this season Here's Williams on first down, getting about three as the quarterback for Tulsa, David Johnson, has avoided the turnover so far in this game after seven turnovers by the Golden Hurricane, including five interceptions thrown by Johnson and the loss to East Carolina in the Conference USA Championship. Here's Johnson again fooling the defense and sliding for what appears to be a first down. Well, with Nate Davis, you know, you just hope that it's not a situation where you start hearing that draft status and highs, you know, late first round, early second round, and then all of a sudden that gets between the ears a little bit, and you start trying to impress and improve your draft stock. And, and as a result, you start pressing on the field, and it, you start trying to do just a little bit too much. Williams gets a couple. Well, you came out after your junior season, Andre. What was that like for you when you started to hear, hey, this guy might be a top 10 pick and you're trying to finish your college season? Well, even at this point, I mean, you just kind of got to block that stuff out. I, I was, I'd never really read the paper, never really tried to pay attention to any of that stuff that was going around uh, surrounding what we had to do. And that was, you know, play at, at that point, at that time, an 11 game schedule, and then chips will fall where they may. Thing about me is I went back to spring practice and practiced for three days. The uh, limit in which you get your paperwork in was at a later date. So I was already in the middle of, or uh, had started spring practice before Jack Pardee takes the job with the Houston Oilers. That kind of sparked it in my head to where maybe this is something that I want to explore a little bit more. Well, his coach, Brady Hope, left for San Diego State, although really Stan Parrish was the one most instrumental in bringing right. Davis to Muncie, Indiana. 
And Parrish, who was Davis's offensive coordinator, is now the head coach at Ball State. Johnson again using his feet to pick up a first down across the 40 yard line. All right, let's get to our answer for our Aflac trivia question. Four in my home state, is what I'm saying. Texas. If I can give them, rattle them off. There they are. TCU, Rice, my alma mater, the University of Houston, and last night's winner, the Texas Longhorns. There's a running play. It gets maybe a yard. Tarion Adams tripped up at the point of attack by putoff. Well, we mentioned that Florida with a win will make it four for that state. You got Florida State. You got Florida Atlantic. And you got South Florida. But Texas will be undefeated. Because Miami right. Miami lost. Yep. To Cal. The state of Texas, that is. Texas Tech lost. Ah, yeah. you had the rain on my parade. Ole Miss beat Texas That's Tech. Right. That That's was right. a big win for, for the Big 12 South last night with that division struggling until the Longhorns won as Johnson pulled in the high snap but tackled immediately by David Jones. And a fine performance by Ole Miss, I might add. Nice first season at Ole Miss for, uh, for Houston Nutt. Remember, Ole Miss, the only team to beat Florida this year. Yeah, it's some big wins. I mean, you beat Texas Tech in a bowl game, you beat Florida on the road, and then you go and won at LSU. Some big, big wins for uh, the Ole Miss program. Of course, Ed Ozron did a great job recruiting there. Now he's off to Tennessee with and Lane he'll, and, and he'll do a great job recruiting at Tennessee. Johnson on third down and 15. Throwed at the feet of Terry and Adams. And it's possible at the punt. Some of the easiest throws are the hardest ones to complete. Nice little easy screen pass to Terry and Adams. And you just want to flip it to him. Get, into, get him. get the football in his hands. Allow him to make a play for you. Uh, and that one's one you just grip it a little bit too tight. As a quarterback, we've all been there. Michael Such has to punt into that win. That's about 40 miles an hour. And he gets it blocked. And it's picked up at the 25 yard line. It'll be Ball State ball inside the 25. Jeremy Hill recovered it after the block. And what I liked about the recovery by Jeremy Hill is he made sure he had the football. Wasn't trying to run with it a little too early where you miss and then all of a sudden Tulsa's able to recover it. But he concentrates right here. Make sure you get the football. Now, secure it and advance it. Like, uh, like the recovery there, and you see the, uh, the reaction by Stan Parrish, the head coach of Ball State now. Robert ends with the block for Ball State. He also has a sack in this game. Ray Davis under center here for first down. Play action, Davis setting up. Open man, but he overthrew Lewis Johnson incomplete. Let's take a look at Nate Davis in depth. You see early they had the fumble, which led to Tulsa's first touchdown of the ball game, and then he kind of got things going here. Nice stepping up in the pocket to Briggs Orsbon. And right here, he's going to make a play with his legs to get himself into the end zone, showing his athletic ability. And there was another turnover in there, but uh, right now set up for some pretty good points or at least an opportunity, Dave, to tie this ball or get, get Ball State closer in this ball game. Again, play action. And again, down the middle of the field and broken up by the man who had the interception, Jake Destin. He almost got another one. I'll tell you what, it's been some close calls for Nate Davis trying to squeeze the ball into some tight, tight windows. Talked about Nate Davis and how he came to Ball State. Stan Parrish, now the head coach, was his position coach and offensive coordinator. A lot of people didn't know whether he'd be able to get into school. Has a learning disability. Uh, the coaches say he's just a slow learner, but he's a communications major, doing fine in school. Is that pass deflected perhaps at the line as Davis got hit, tried to hit Oris Bond, pressure by James Lockett. Uh, James Lockett's a guy that they, uh, he's an explosive off the edge rusher they'll move him around defensively he's got eight and a half sacks 
this year. And uh, you know, he's one of those guys, a silent assassin, likes writing poetry in his spare time. But put that helmet on him, and he uh, he changes into something else. Well, that's got to be disappointing, though, for Davis and Ball State. Three and out after you get the block punt. Now McGarvey will attempt a 40-yard field goal. And McGarvey puts it through. So the Cardinals do get points after the block punt and pull it in seven of Tulsa. When we come back, we'll wear it out on the running youths. It is confusing. Welcome back to the GMAC Bowl. Ball State trying to get its 13th win. The Florida Oklahoma winner will also have 13. One school definitely has 13, and that's the Utah Utes, and that's the subject of Andre's wear it out. Yeah, you know, you talk about Utah, and all they do is take care of business against a tough, tough schedule. We're able to take care of business in the Sugar Bowl. I talked to Brian Johnson, the quarterback at Utah, and there, after that conversation, there was no doubt that they were going to compete and be in that football game. They didn't fear Alabama, went out and took care of business, and uh, I think they deserve some national championship-type conversation. So you think they should get some votes oh, in the AP? Absolutely, no doubt about it. I mean, you set it up in the way it used to be. So when you go out and you win all your football games, you get a chance to compete for the national championship. What's different about it in this sense? All right, well, what about Texas? And if you're going to go with Utah, Texas, granted, didn't go undefeated, but played a much tougher schedule. What I'd like to see is a couple, a, a game or two extra where you play well, Texas, sure. USC, Utah in the mix, and maybe the winner of Florida and Oklahoma. That's the perfect scenario. And of course, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Deep kickoff, and Damaris Johnson will take a knee, and it'll come out to the 20. So if Oklahoma wins now, more votes for Texas and more votes for Utah well, if Oklahoma beats Florida? Especially if it's a close game, that's going to stir up a high of, hive of bees. When you talk about Oklahoma, Texas beats Oklahoma in the head-to-head, -head, Utah going undefeated. And, oh, yeah, by the way, the game that USC and the way they displayed things coming down the stretch, I mean, it's going to make for a nice little mixture and some nice water talk conversation. Of course, the winner of the FedEx BCS championship game is the national champion. It's possible to have a split champ. We're talking about votes in the Associated Press poll, and we're talking right. about Utah and Texas. But you'd have to think it's not going to be in enough votes, even if Oklahoma wins, to share the national title with either Oklahoma or Florida. A running play gets maybe two yards there for Tulsa. SEC perfect in BCS yeah. championship games and Oklahoma losing to West Virginia and Boise State. They're just glad not to be playing in Phoenix. They're glad, glad to be playing somewhere else because they've had trouble there. I'm telling you, if it's a close football game, there will be a lot of barking from the Longhorns. Uh, Utah, which deservedly so, and around that uh, water cooler on Friday, there will be a lot of talk about who should be the national champion. Clay tackled and shaken up as B.J. Hill brings him down for a loss. When he has really battled an ankle injury even before the Conference USA Championship game, and you can almost see the frustration. It's that left ankle, and he's battled it all season long or later in the year and finally got healthy. And he is one of their top, top offensive players. Johnson able to hang in there, and now with everybody covered, takes off, trying to outrun yes, David Jones. David Johnson close to the first down at the 30-yard line. Oh, we're seeing a a part of his game that he didn't really display all <laughs> much this season. But he's taken off, and when you don't see it on film, you really don't prepare for it much because you think that uh, David Johnson's just not a runner. And watch him as he gets to the edge and, and outruns. Mr. Jones here, the uh, middle linebacker for Ball State. So some mobility here in Mobile out of the quarterback, David Johnson, 56 rushing yards. Now I'll hand it off to Terrian Adams. No gain on the play. Well, this is a team when you think of all the points that Tulsa scores, you're thinking, well, they must just throw it around the park all the time. Well, they're pretty balanced. They rush for about 254 yards a game, and that's where they like to start. 
And oh yeah, by the way, they'll throw it for over 300 yards a game. Johnson steps up, makes a great throw to Damaris Johnson, another Tulsa first down. Wednesday night, ESPN delivers a special evening of hoops with college basketball and NBA games back to back. First, it's Davidson and Duke at 7 Eastern with Tariko Van Gundy and Mark Jackson on the call. Then at 9 Eastern, your NBA destination takes you to Denver as Dick Vitale calls the Heat Nuggets game at 9 Eastern time. No Carmelo Anthony in that game as Terry and Adams is loose and might go inside the 15. Adams will score. Touchdown, Tulsa. Ball handling right here. Watch the ball handling of David Johnson. This is a nice give underneath and carries out the fake, which takes about three Ball State defenders away from the play. And now Terrian Adams down the sideline. And he's not known for his speed, but he had enough to get in the end zone then, Dave. His second touchdown of the game. Last year, he had a touchdown rushing, receiving, and passing in the GMAC Bowl. As Tulsa beat up on Bowling Green 63 to 7. Tonight they lead Ball State in the GMAC Bowl 24 to 10. Looking at the Barton Academy built in 1835, the first public school in Alabama, 28 years before the public school system in the state was established. 24-10 Tulsa leads here in Mobile, GMAC Bowl. Windy, about 40 mile an hour winds here. And the city has held up. Moderate damage has suffered during uh, Katrina, yeah. Hurricane Ivan, and uh, Ivan had extensive uh, flooding downtown after Katrina. And Mobile considered uh, the wettest city in the contiguous 48 states. They average about 67 inches of rain per year. I left you speechless. Yeah, you did. I mean, that's, that's uh, you know, Google's pretty good to you, isn't it? Got that right. <laughs> Our crack research department called Google. Ryan Hartke, one of the up men, takes it across the 40-yard line to about the 43. Now Ball State, got to get get yourself a nice drive going into halftime. Try to cut cut into this margin that Tulsa's put up, and Nate Davis has got to get this offense going. He came in and we've had a couple of uh, has started to sputter a little bit offensively. Good starting field position here for this drive. Ball State in search of its first ever bull win. As we mentioned, there's going to be at least two 13-win teams: Utah and then the Oklahoma-Florida winner in Ball State. Can join them with a win in this game. But down two scores here. But a first down and more for Grant. Inside the 40 and knocked out of bounds at the 37 as we go to Reese Davis with a Sports Center right now. All right, Dave, over on ESPN right now, you got uh, Texas and Arkansas playing basketball. If Hogs have already beaten Oklahoma and Fayetteville earlier this season, though the SEC's down, if they can pull off this double by getting the seventh ranked Longhorns, it would be uh, quite a feather in the cap of John Pelfrey, Michael Washington, and the guys. Right now, Arkansas have 14 10, 12 and change to go in the first half. All right, Reese, we look forward to talking, uh, to, uh, hearing from you in about four minutes and change. Is but Carl Lewis takes it outside and does well to get positive yardage before Charles Davis makes the tackle. Well, he's a small little, you know, you, you, hate to, you can't really say powerful with a guy 5'6", 184 pounds, but built low to the ground, and you, you try to tackle him high around the shoulder pads, and he just kind of slips away from you and breaking tackles in order to pick up some positive yards. It looks like Rod Gilmore next to Brock Hewitt in the studio. <laughs> Sorry, boys. Oh, boy. We'll hear from them as well. They're standing yeah. by with Reese Davis talk about this game and also the FedEx BCS National Championship game, which you can hear on ESPN Radio Thursday, Florida and Oklahoma. Davis taking off, can't shake Mike Bryan. And he gets about six or seven inside the 30. Which shows you again his playmaking ability. It was actually a design screen to Mikael Lewis. And uh, he pulls it down. Nothing there. He couldn't get the screen away. So all of a sudden he pulls it down, makes a play with his legs. And he's, he came in averaging just under five yards a carry. So he's not afraid to pull it down and make plays.
They run the ball on third down and four, and Lewis goes nowhere. Wilson Garrison made the stop, loss of one. How about that call there by Stan Perry? Well, could be thinking four down territory here. But he's got the wind to his back, so it'd be kind of an, a, a, an easier type field goal, but looks as though he's going to uh, send some extra receivers in and keep Nate Davis on the field. It would be about a 44 yard field goal with the wind at your back. Ball State going on fourth and five, and now a timeout called by Tulsa. So that'll leave the Golden Hurricane with two. They lead it 24 10, fourth and five when we come back. Miami and Sport in Oklahoma get set to battle for the national championship. Jeff Jagodzinski's saga at Boston College will have the latest on that. Also show you highlights of the UConn-West Virginia basketball game. It was a barn burner in Morgantown. Dave Pash, Brock Hewitt wants to know what's up with that goatee you're rocking tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep up with Andre. You got to try something different, Brock. Lost week. Line a year ago. Here's Davis taken off on fourth down and five, and he got the first down. And he's still going, breaking a tackle. Oh, look at him spin into the end zone for a touchdown. Well, now they're saying that he stepped out at the eight yard line. One official said touchdown. Another said that he was out at the eight. What a play by Nate Davis. I mean, right along the sideline. And you talk about competing at the highest level. Nobody really opened down. Phillies get under tremendous pressure by Moten Hopkins, and then he escapes outside, makes one guy miss, runs over another one. Ooh, I don't and think I'm he not seeing out. where he's out of bounds, not yet. Oh, wait a minute. Just right there. Official was right. That's actually a good call. What a run, though. Every play is reviewed, but we'll see if there's further review needed after that. Apparently not. Lewis. Inside the five to the four yard line. Tanner Annell sticking his face in there first for Tulsa. But right along the sideline, right there, you see his foot right on the line. Yeah, Johnny Crawford, as the headline's been all over it. Yeah, as he's getting ready to make the a nice little stop right there. Right there, you see the the foot. Still, style points. <laughs> it wasn't exactly Crabtree-esque because he couldn't stay in bounds. Here's Lewis who gets planted by Tanner Annell and Roy Roberts. Wow. Roberts just smoked him. He's had a day. Nine first half tackles. He's a guy that can line up at corner and safety, and he unloads on Mr. Lewis. Watch him here blitzing off the edge, and he's kind of got caught making a move and made him pay for it. Now it's third and goal. And a timeout called by Tulsa. The one remaining for the Golden Hurricane. That'll bring up third down and goal. Oh, we, we talked about some you know, great bowl games so far and uh, Utah surprising Alabama in the Sugar Bowl. Who do you think has benefited the most this bowl season? Is it Notre Dame who we saw in Hawaii? I think it's absolutely Notre Dame, Charlie Weiss in that program because there's so much heat. Do we keep Charlie Weiss? Do we we make a change at that position uh, from recruit a recruiting standpoint? And they go way over to Hawaii and a team that could have been really, really dangerous. They took care of business. I thought Jimmy Clausen had kind of his coming out party in that game in, uh, in Hawaii. And I think Notre Dame set up to have a pretty good season next year. And uh, the Irish... Uh, with that big win against Hawaii and you know you look at the TCU and, and their win over Boise State and, and Utah even though they're going to lose a lot of people uh, still a, still a great year and a great benefit for them winning two BCS Bulls you know they, they beat Pittsburgh yeah. in the Fiesta Bowl when Urban Meyer was there 
All you got to do is get them there, and they'll take care of business once uh, once they get there. But an excellent season for Utah. Hats off, and uh, they they deserve the type of talk and conversations that they're in. How about Arizona well. too, beating BYU? Yeah. That's that's big for that school. As they throw the fade here on third down, and it's intercepted and incomplete. He couldn't hang on to it. Sims could not hang on to it, and that's big because Ball State has one more play. And it looks as though. They're going to send in the field goal unit this time. Gambled before and I paid off, but this time they're going to take the points. Davis is lucky he didn't have another turnover there as Kenny Sims, the second, should have intercepted that. Yeah, it looked like his intended receiver kind of pulled up on him, which uh, led for the throw right to Kenny D. Sims. That was Miles Trent, who was the intended receiver in a late 22 yard attempt here by McGarvey. And he bangs it through to make it 24 13 Tulsa Golden Hurricane trying to secure their second straight GMAC Bowl win. They won 63 7 last year perhaps a closer game in the second half this season and owed to the 2008 Bowl season coming up from Andre look forward to hearing what you have to say there and of course uh, our announcer swap. Dick Vitale to the NBA, Van Gundy and Mark Jackson to college basketball, joining Mike Tirico on the Duke Davidson game. It should be fun to watch both those games. Meanwhile, a nine play, 53 yard drive. Ball State did pick up a fourth down on that drive, elected then to kick the field goal on fourth and goal. And Tulsa will have one timeout in 29 seconds. And, you know, they're running about three plays per minute. Uh, so far in this the football game so you know they're going to get at least a couple plays off here. Yeah, they would like to take you fast try to wear you down early in a game and kind of all revolves around the quarterback David Johnson if he's hitting on all cylinders their their plan works to a T. But if he struggles he's turning the ball over is not efficient and Tulsa will have a hard time offensively. Jake Hogue will kick it away here for Ball State. And the wind has died down. It's actually reversed, and now it's going from the left to the right. And a hard shot. Johnson scooping it up across the 25. Flag down, and so is Johnson at the 30. First penalty flag we've seen all day. Been a clean game. Ball State is the least penalized team in the country. They were penalized only 14 times in eight regular season games in the Mid-American Conference. That's incredible. Some teams are penalized 14 times in a game. <laughs> and uh, those teams lose. This one likely against the Tulsa here on the return. I mean, this will kind of change your, your thought process for Tulsa taking them back 10 yards and where you would start this drive with 22 seconds. A long conversation from the officials. And now they're saying it's on Ball State. And we'll get to do this all over again. Illegal block below the ways. Number 44. 15 yard penalty. Run. First down. Now that really changes things for Tulsa because you have better field position at your own 45 yard line with a timeout in 22 seconds. This isn't the type of offense that will uh, fold it up and go to the house for halftime. They'll try to get a field goal out of this or maybe even a shot into the end zone. And you saw the wind dying down but with little wind there is it's actually now at the back of Tulsa instead of in its face as it was earlier in the half. Yeah, it has changed. It was really gusting in the face of David Johnson but didn't seem to bother him. He's throwing the ball well going uh, this direction on the field. But they're going to keep it on the ground here on first down and lose considerable yardage. Williams taken down by David Jones. Loss of about three. And now Tulsa will call its final timeout. Just trying to pop a draw through there. And see if you can hit something big and then try to maybe take a shot at the end zone, but it didn't work out. 
Wednesday night, ESPN delivers a special evening of hoops with college basketball and NBA games back to back at 7 Eastern. Stephen Curry and Davidson take on Duke, followed by Miami and Denver in the NBA. College basketball and NBA Wednesday on ESPN. And that Duke Davidson game will be called by NBA announcers Mike Tirico, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson. And Dick Vitale will handle the Denver Miami game along with Dan Schulman, who does both. NBA in college. We got to get Dickie V in a college football game That's next it. year, right in between yeah, just us. See if we can work that one in. But Stephen Curry, love watching him play. He can fill it up. Well, I like watching his dad play as well. And how about Duke and the way it's playing right now? Second in the country behind yeah. Pittsburgh with North Carolina losing at home to Boston College over the weekend. That will be an interesting basketball game, one that I'll, uh, I'll definitely be tuned into. And no Carmelo Anthony for Denver. Nuggets playing great basketball. Uh, third in the West with winning percentage, but he's out now with a hand injury for the next few weeks. But Dwayne Wade will play for the Miami Heat. Here's Johnson. Almost gets stripped. And then throws it away. Seven seconds remaining in the half. He's trying to extend the play. David Johnson maybe work some clock. And now they're uh... they're bringing Jacob Bauer must have a stronger he, arm yeah, than he Johnson must, here. He must that... be the guy that actually can get it to the end zone here. And ball start on Tulsa. Jacob Collins, the tight end, moved on the play. Um, Range missed us most of this game, and it was a clean game, Dave Pash. Until you mentioned penalties. Actually, I mentioned it like 15 minutes ago. Yeah, and all of have a sudden, we, some we have all these, it's just raining flags all of a sudden. Prior to the snap, offsides, number 90 on the defense. 25 yards, down remains third, seven seconds on the clock. So Brandon Crawford was actually offside there, so they put the clock back to seven seconds. Crawford, 32-year-old walk-on. He was in the Marine Corps from 1999 to 2003. He's really played well this year for Ball State. Three sacks on the season. Bauer in trouble. Still able to get the pass away. And it's knocked down at the one. He does have a strong arm there. Yeah. And a guy hanging on him, and he still got it to the one. Alex Knipp knocked it down for Ball State. David Johnson with a solid first half, a touchdown pass for Tulsa, which leads this game 24 to 13. Ball State trailing at halftime for the first time this season. Now here is Reese, Rod, and Brock, and the Flomax halftime report. Fellas? Added qualifiers and busters alike, sponsored by everything from Magic Jack to Tostitos Chips. You want reality TV? And I'll give it to you. 19 days, winners. And losers. The expected and of course the surprises. Great performances. Capitalizing on opportunities and yes, missing opportunities. The highs, the lows, the drama, the yin, quickly followed by the yang. Rewarding holiday fair, culminating in number one versus number two. Yeah, I played it, I lived it, and I breathed it, and that's why. I love college football. Well, maybe some more memories to come here in the second half if Ball State can get back in this game down 24-13. David Johnson pretty solid in the first half, although you would think that both teams would eschew the passing game for now. 72 degrees it remains, but heavy rain, although no lightning in the area, which means we'll likely get this in at this point. Boy. If you're Tulsa, it's nice to have a lead. You're getting the football first when conditions like this in a ball game blow in. You ever try to throw the ball in games like this? Oh, yeah. Here's Johnson on the return. Tough to get the footing on that field turf, and down he goes at the 12-yard line. Good coverage by Cosby. You know, the key right now to both quarterbacks, David Johnson and Nate Davis, keep a dry towel around, a center, a guard, someone with a dry towel to keep your hands dry so that you can grip the football. You see the first half numbers there. Dominated rushing. Tulsa right on pace to do what they normally do. 
the total yards pretty much equal. Turnovers the story. Ball State with three of them. As Tulsa does run it with Adams on first down, and he gets a first down. Out near the 27 before Trey Feist makes the stop. And boy, uh, how about all of our ESPN camera operators and all the folks behind the scenes who tough it out while we're up here yeah. in a toasty booth. Nice, safe, and dry, and they're out giving you the shots that, uh, that you see in this game. They've done a fantastic job all season long. We're grateful to be a part of uh, this crew. We just such a great group of men and women that uh, work on our uh, Saturday noon crew throughout the season. Tim Dalton, our producer, Jeff Evers, our director, and second and five for Tulsa. Tulsa trying to get a school record 11th win. Ball State going for its 13th win and its first ever bowl victory is Johnson throws high intended for Damaris Johnson. How much does the rain impact the throwing of the quarterback? Well, you know, if you can, the, the officials are going to keep you a dry ball in for the majority of the play until it's set. And then now you want the center to cover it up as quickly as possible. But you want a dry towel and sitting in there, see him right there trying to keep those hands dry. Well, by the time though they get the new ball in, it's it's wet after about a second. Yeah, you just got to play football. This is when you're growing up as a kid, you don't want to go in the house type weather right here. Stay out and play in. Johnson to throw again, and this time his pass is right there to Damaris Johnson for a first down at the Ball State 42. If you don't think about it and you just go and play, the natural instincts and the habits kind of take over. You don't really worry about the rain. You can't control it. So just get you a nice grip on the football and step into a throw with a guy, Brandon Crawford, barreling down on uh, David Johnson. He throws a strike to a guy that's really played a big role for Tulsa in this game, Damaris Johnson. You're not surprised that Tulsa's coming out throwing. Not at all. I mean, you're not going to change your offensive game plan at this point. There's a flanker screen to Damaris Johnson. Got a great block from Tyler Holmes, the left tackle, and takes it inside the 20. You know, Dave, you, you talk about the rain, and those are saying, well, you got to change. You got to go to this. It's, it, it's what you do. This is the offense that Tulsa runs, and offensively, you actually have an advantage because your footing, you know where you're going, you know where your routes are going to, the depth of your routes, where you're going to plant your foot. The defense is at a disadvantage, so now as an offensive unit, you take advantage of that. The backup quarterback, Jacob Bauer, is in the game right now. Signed with BYU out of high school, then went to a junior college, and he gets tattooed by Brandon Crawford, the 32-year-old former Marine who's a walk-on and was second team all Mac this year at age 32. They returned to Ball State in 06. He's kind of living out a dream playing college football. He walked on and really inspired the person that inspired him. His mother is a full-time, works full-time, decided to go back to school herself as a part-time student. David Johnson back in there at quarterback now for Tulsa. There's Jamad Williams trying to bounce to the outside, and he gets bounced. Sean Baker, Mac Freshman of the Year on defense, made the hit. We haven't called his name a lot in this game. Yep, newcomer of the year for uh, the Mac Conference. Top 14th in the country in interceptions and led this team with six picks as a redshirt freshman. Eighth play of the drive, it's been balanced with runs and passes despite the weather. And the rain just picked up in the last 20 seconds here, really coming down now. They fake the end around Johnson with time, his throw is there. Slick Shelley with the first down to the end zone, touchdown! I'll tell you what, and this is what I'm talking about, about the offense 
having the advantage. Slick Shelley is going to come from the left side of the field. And what's the toughest way to cover a receiver when he's crossing all the way across the field? That's tough enough on a dry field. But if he knows where he's going and the conditions are like they are tonight, Oh, it's going to give him just a little bit more room once he hits it full speed and David Johnson throws a nice catchable football in the ring. Despite the slick field slick Shelley with a catch and run for the touchdown the extra point at it 31 13 Tulsa leading. So an appropriate name for this field but weather didn't bother Tulsa at all on that drive. Davis trying to keep the hands dry now facing an 18 point deficit after Tulsa marched down the field on the first drive of the third quarter. David Johnson with his second touchdown pass. Well, David Johnson's gone out and proved that he can play in the conditions but Nate, Nate Davis you know, with a couple of fumbles or fumbles in the Mac championship game fumbles early in this one could be uh, playing between his ears a little bit. And Johnson now with 45 touchdown passes on the season. He's too shy of Paul Smith's school record set last year. Remember, Johnson backed up Smith yeah. for three seasons, finally became a starter this year and had a great year. With the exception, really, of one game, the Conference USA title game against East Carolina as Toriel Gibson gets clocked right as he scoops it up at the 25-yard line by Ade Manga. And speaking of school records, Terry and Adams actually has a school record. He's yep. now the all-time leading rusher at Tulsa. He made it 93 coming in. And I think now he's uh, sitting somewhere around 109 for the ball game. So congrats to Terry and Adams. He had a game this year against Tulane two, two, two where he went for 323. Well, you hit it in the first half. Yeah. Tulsa's not just a passing team. They're one of the best rushing teams in the country as well. Ball State will run it on first down. And out near the 30 is McQuail Lewis. Terrell Nimmons on the tackle. He set some school records themselves. This team, 476 points for Ball State. They scored 62 total touchdowns this year as an offensive unit. They're steady, they're patient, they're balanced. They're going to have to open up in some conditions that are less than ideal to get themselves back into this ball game. Already three turnovers by Ball State and a box snap there. Ball still loose. And that was a problem in the Mac title game. Two turnovers on botched snaps by Ball State in that game against Buffalo. Still trying to peel off the players and Michael Switzer. The left guard came up with it for Ball State. And Dan Gerberry, the center, and you know that was a problem for Nate Davis when he arrived at Ball State was taking snaps from under the center. He played most of his high school career in the shotgun, so he had to learn to take snaps. He spent a lot of time, you know, running laps because he was putting it on the ground like that. And you get in a situation here. I think you put him where he's comfortable. Get him back there in that shotgun. They do it now here on third down and long. And Davis looking down the sideline. The pass was there, but Darius Hill could not hang on to it. Covered by John Destin, and so Ball State has to punt. Yeah, it looks as though the Tulsa players, they come out of the locker room, and they're kind of dealing with the conditions. It's like, hey, this is what it is. Let's go play. And you see guys kind of looking around at Ball State and just kind of getting around as if they're, they're more concerned about the conditions than getting themselves back in this football game. Well, it's always interesting in bowl games to see how teams come out right. emotionally after tough losses to end the year. Remember, Ball State went 12 and 0, and then because of turnovers, really lost to Buffalo in the MAC title game. Meanwhile, as that's a great punt, hey, Chris Miller down inside the 15. Else. You've got Tulsa which lost to the conference USA champs East Carolina in that title game but has bounced back pretty well in this game under Todd Grant. Chris Miller just hit one about 61 yards in this in this weather. Man, he keeps kicking them like that. He's going to get a little recognition to uh, to punt on Sundays himself. Now David Johnson back to work. Seemingly unfazed by the wind, or excuse me, the rain 
And he's going to stay on the sideline for this play as they'll go out of the Wildcat with A.J. Whitmore as the quarterback. And Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator, when we visited with him, he said that the reason this is called the Wildcat is not because of the formation, but because of the school that started this formation, in his opinion. Kansas State. Yeah. High snap, Whitmore taking off. And a good pickup out near the 18-yard line, dropped by Drew Duffin. And you're ask yourself, if you're asking yourself, why is Todd Graham, you know, taking a chance with ball handling in, in these types of situations where he is on the field? A.J. Whitmore was a high school quarterback. We mentioned it, over 11,000 yards of total offense for his high school career, and he accounted for 120 touchdowns. So he's very comfortable in that Wildcat formation. Johnson in trouble and whipped down at the 13 yard line by the safety Alex Knipp. Still raining but not as hard as it was when we kicked off the third quarter here at the GMAC Bowl in Mobile Alabama. Dave Passion, Andre Ware, Tulsa looking for its 11th win of the season. Ball State trying to avoid its second straight loss. Here's Johnson on third down, and that pass is pulled in at the 32-yard line by Jesse Meyer. First down, Tulsa. If you're wondering, talking about the GMAC Bowl, General Motors Acceptance Corporation is what it stands for. The education there. I have to admit that uh, the producer, Kim Belton, kind of updated me on that one. I just thought you knew that off the top of your head. Oh, yeah. Here's Adams trying to get to the outside, slip one tackle. Lowers the shoulder and gets a couple yards. Trey Bice slowed him up. And actually, we're going to say that he went out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. Well, you talk about wanting to kind of redeem yourself for a bad performance in your conference championship game. I think David Johnson has come out and had that type of performance tonight. He's itching to get in another football game. Did not want to let that one be his, the last one as he rides off as a Tulsa Golden Hurricane. And he has put on some type of performance and continuing to do so. Johnson finds Whitmore here, and he gets drilled at the 30 yard line by Trey Lewis, so that's a loss of about three. And Whitmore, some athlete, 5'9, he was a 6'5 high jumper in high school. Six, yeah, 6'5 six, high jumper. We mentioned all the uh, accolades at playing quarterback, the total offense, the touchdowns, and at one point had a 23 game win streak as a high school quarterback. Do you think because of what NFL teams are doing with the Wildcats that more college quarterbacks who may not normally get a chance to play that position in the NFL will be able to make it at the next level? They better be athletes <laughs> and be able to, they better be able to do something else. Johnson sacked inside the 25. David Jones back there along with Brian Haynes for Ball State. Now, I think Pat White can play quarterback in the NFL, but certainly if you're drafting him for something else, mm -hmm. that he could give you that element and just scare the daylights out of a defensive coordinator trying to prepare for a game in which they put him in the Wildcat formation. I think he's ideal. Antoine Randall, that was a second round pick yeah. as a receiver. And he played quarterback at Indiana. They need a good receiver and also can run the ball in those specialty situations as a quarterback. That punt will die at the 35 yard line. A 41 yard punt. This is a game in which every ball in the bag will end up being used before it's all over. It's coming down again in Mobile 31 13, Tulsa leading. Tailgating recipes around college football this year. And coming up, Dominic Lowe of Mobile is going to tell us how he makes his Southern style spare ribs. Man, that looks good. Mm. 
And we'll also give you our top three from our tour of college football stadiums and all the great tailgating venues we've been to. Davis in trouble as pressure was coming from Moten Hopkins in the pass incomplete. Let's listen in to Dominic Lowe from Mobile. This thing called Connecticut sausage is the world's best. Connecticut County. Connecticut County. We have also we have the onions and bell peppers with that. More spare ribs. We're gonna turn it over now. The, the season. We're gonna we're gonna add a little Worcestershire sauce. That's gonna give it that taste, that southern taste. It's very great. <laughs> Only in Mobile, Alabama. He said a little Worcestershire sauce. I mean, that was like half, half a, bottle. a bottle and about <laughs> two of them. Nice run there. About nine yards by McQuail Lewis carrying defenders with him. That looked terrific, though. The problem is, though, they wonder we can't get to it. Everybody yeah. at home now that's hungry can go have a second meal or something here. But we just got to sit here and tough just out keep, the last Keep it warm for us. Half. That's right. Save us a plate. Oh, still coming down. It's big third down and short here for Ball State. Just two for ten on the day. And. They're in the top 10 in the country coming into this game in third down conversions. They run Lewis and he loses yardage. Terrell Nimmons blew that play up from the start. Now Terrell Nimmons got penetration and did basically just push the center Dan Gerberry all the way back to the point of the handoff to the ball exchange. And well Lewis just really couldn't get himself started. Chris Miller will boot it away. Trey Johnson back for Tulsa. Johnson makes a nice move at the 20. And down at the 23. Let's take a look at our top three. Entrees from our tailgating trips this year in Miami, the Instant Grill. The Brunswick Stew from Blacksburg. Yeah, that was my favorite. And the omelet in a bag from Louisville. That was pretty good. That was, that was two. pretty good. Look at how the omelet in the bag looks. That was number two for me. The Instant Grill, I'd say, was number three. Brunswick Stew is yours, huh? Yep, Blacksburg. Hit a home run with that one? Every time we go to Blacksburg, I'm having that. Knock yourself out, partner. Although those spare ribs look pretty good tonight. They run Adams on first down, pushed out of play by Alex Kniff. A gain of a couple there on first down. Oh, you can run the football like Tulsa for over 250. Yeah, you're really not concerned about conditions like this. You can hold on to the football. Seems as though David Johnson's not affected by it. He can still. Kind of keep the defense off balance where they're not all crowded in there expecting the run. But uh, if you need to, you can still run it. Look at that football. Here's Adams. Got the first down and more. Adams inside the 40 of Ball State. You know, we were talking about announcer swaps earlier with Dick Vitale doing the NBA game tomorrow night. Tariko, Mark Jackson, and Van Gundy doing the Duke Davidson game. I'll bet Todd's taste of the town, Todd Blackledge, might want to do a little announcer swap and join us for some of these road trips. That's right. Some of the food we've been able to uh, to have on these trips. we got to get some of those. He's, he's had some before. pretty good ones himself, though. Tulsa moving the ball on the ground. Here they go again. Adams tripped up. Otherwise, he might have been gone. Uh, Williams, rather. He gets about eight yards on that carry. Well, he is a nice complimentary back to Terry and Adams. More of a slasher type. And Terry and Adams, more of a bruiser. He's going to come right downhill at you. But uh, you get a nice little mixture with Jamad Williams. Six plus plays in this half. A running play so far on this drive. Good play there as Williams is knocked down immediately by Drew Duffin. So third down coming up. Ball State needs a stop. Down 18 points. 
And continuing to move the football, Tulsa. Even in the conditions, it lets you know what type of players you have, the efficiency in which they execute the offense. And if they need to kind of abandon the passing game for a little while, they're, they're able to do it. And a bad snap. Whitmore picks it up, tries to make a play. It's trampled at the 42-yard line. Well, Ball State needed that. Sean Baker there first for the Cardinals. A high snap. A.J. Whitmore couldn't handle it. And you had to figure at some point you were going to see one of these yep. go flying over the quarterback or whomever's in there as head. Actually, that was right about chest high. He just took his his eyes away from it. And in conditions like this, you really got to focus on ball handling first. Make sure you get the football before you start looking down the field to make a play. Such will punt. B.J. Hill back for Ball State. That kicks to the near side and out of bounds at the 18 yard line. Still coming down in Mobile. Hasn't really impacted Tulsa. Ball State, though, struggling in this weather. Welcome back to Mobile, the hometown of Cameron Hank, Henry Aaron. And this were a baseball game, it would have been called long ago. Pouring down rain for about the last hour here in Mobile. I think we're we're headed for that 67 inches. Yeah, that's what they average per year. You're saying tonight, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> before game time's over, as it's coming down. And Ball State in a position where it has to start throwing the ball on most of its plays, down 18 points. Two minutes to go in the third. Tulsa trying to win its second straight GMAC bowl. I think they'll do the trophy presentation indoors. Whoever wins it as Davis is planted by George Klinkscale. A lot of folks left, but uh, certainly hats off to uh, the band members who, as soon as they came out at halftime, that's when the rain really started. Yep. Davis with an incomplete pass. Trying to hit Morris Bond, so it'll bring up third down and long. More Tanner Antel. The outside linebacker just laid into Nate Davis. I mean, he get, just barely got it off. And he's still, somebody didn't, they didn't tell Tanner that uh, they weren't still playing football. It's of a quarter and a minute, 36 seconds left here in the third. A lot of football to be played, and he's going to play every down of it. Nate Davis just 9 of 24, an interception, and another fumble. That's the fourth time that he's fumbled the ball. And no ruling yet. Uh, Tulsa players got it, but they're going to say that Davis was down. Cornelius Arnick was the man that forced the fumble. That's his second forced fumble of the game. Ball State has to punt. It's kind of the hands, the gloves are gone. But, uh, you know, he doesn't really grip the laces. I don't think that matters much. It's just when he drops the ball down, you give a defender a chance to get a hand in there, and that's that's where the frustration is coming for for Nate Davis. Third three and out of the half for Ball State. Each drive has resulted in a three and out in the second half. Short kick makes a Ball State hop and then just dies at the 44. Tulsa will have good field position to start this next drive, leading by 18 points. Well, Todd Graham signed a 10 year extension on January 1st. It runs through the 2018 2019 season. Well, Tulsa at one point with uh, Jerry Rome was a very proud program. And then as they got into the 2000s, they just didn't have the facilities really to compete. And then Steve Crackthorpe went in and yep. the athletic department really supported him and got a Great facility. Graham was cracked towards the defensive coordinator, then got the head coaching job at Rice, and then uh, came back after one season to be the head coach at Tulsa. As Whitmore is spun down after about four yards, tackled by Cosby. Well, double digit wins. They're going to have won 10 wins, had, or had 10 wins two years in a row. That's the first time in the program's history. Now 
now four straight bowl games in the last, or actually four straight bowl games, five in the last six years. It's been an impressive kind of run for uh, for the for the Hurricane. And Todd was a commodity here with some of those other openings. Reported that he talked with Auburn, eventually settled on Gene Chiswick. Todd told us that he didn't have a dad growing up, so his coaches were always his mentors. That's what he wanted to be. And He's turned into a fine head coach, and even though he signed that 10-year extension, you would imagine that if Tulsa keeps winning, that a lot of people will be interested in his services. Yep, and you talked about upgrading the facility. $52 million were pumped into Tulsa's facilities over the last two seasons. 31-13, Graham trying to get a school record 11th win, one quarter away from doing it. To order ES. Take a look at what I've done, amazing. Take a look at where I'm from, amazing. Overcame odds been blazing. Just call me Superman. Take a look at what I've done, amazing. Take a look at where I'm from, amazing. Overcame odds been blazing. Just call me Superman. 31 points, more than 400 yards, no penalties or turnovers, almost a perfect game offensively for Tulsa in search of its school record 11th victory. We enter the fourth quarter with the Golden Hurricane leading by 18. And a big hit, but Terry Adams just bounces off of the tackle and picks up about eight yards. This is David Johnson, his last end of the quarter run. He does this in between the first and second, third and fourth quarters. That might have been a little bit more fun this year. Perhaps on their way to a GMAC Bowl win as Adams is on his way inside the 25-yard line, out of bounds at the 21. When two seniors with Adams and Johnson are soaking up every minute of this football game. He was a, this is a first-year starter, his first year, David Johnson, to be a starter on this team, and he's going to see this one all the way through. See the numbers for Johnson. Also did a good job running the ball, as has Terry Adams, who's got a buck 79 and two touchdowns. And Johnson fooled everybody there, gets to the 15, picks up about five. Let's go to Reese Davis now in the studio. All right, Dave, right now over on ESPN2, Texas and Arkansas are playing a terrific game. As you look at Gary Johnson of the Longhorns, he's been a, a stout player inside for Rick Barnes all season. A four-point game at the moment. Texas has the lead, number seven in the nation, on the road right now against the Hawks. And more college basketball tomorrow night, Reese. As Duke takes on Davidson, Louisville in South Florida over on ESPN2, and then the Heat and the Nuggets at 9 Eastern on ESPN. And what will be unique about these games is Mike Tirico, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson, who might normally call the NBA game, will do the Duke-Davidson game, and then Dick Vitale on the call along with Dan Schulman of the Heat and the Nuggets. Can't wait to watch Dickie V doing the NBA. Here's Adams cutting inside the five, and he dives for his third touchdown of the game. We're talking about going out in a big way as a senior. To set the uh, career rushing mark at Tulsa, and then have this type of performance to go along with it, stamping his third touchdown and a nice run. But Terry and Adams. Well, Danny and Tomlinson of TCU played in the first GMAC Bowl and lit it up. Terry and Adams here in the 10th GMAC Bowl with LT like numbers. Maybe not recent LT numbers, but certainly in LT's heyday with the San Diego Chargers. He's got 190 yards rushing, three touchdowns on the night, and Tulsa leads Ball State. 38-13 on its way to a second straight GMAC Bowl victory. GMAC Bowl, Marshall and East Carolina trailing 38-8 to, to East Carolina at halftime. Byron Lefwich went nuts for Marshall. 576 yards passing and a game-tying touchdown with seven seconds left. And the game winner in the second overtime to complete one of the great bowl comebacks ever. What an exciting game that was. 
And some great quarterbacks, as uh, everybody knows, in the Mid-American Conference, Byron Leftwich, Chad Pennington, who led the Miami Dolphins to a division title. And Ben Roethlisberger played his final game of the 2003 GMAC Bowl, led Miami to a 13-1 record. And Nate Davis of uh, Ball State was hoping to lead his team to a 13-1 mark, but it just hasn't happened. Three turnovers for Davis and Ball State down. 38-13, although a good return by Gibson out across uh, the 30-yard line near the 34. Terry and Adams with 190 rushing yards for Tulsa and three touchdowns in this game. So he ties a school record with his 32nd career rushing touchdown. Yeah, he's had some type of year. We talked about him being a downhill runner. He looks up the contact. And uh, they've had a hard time bringing him down today. What do you think the future holds for Nate Davis? Based on what you've seen, do you feel Davis is ready for the National Football League? Looking at the entire body of work, not just tonight in the MAC title game, as that pass is incomplete. Maybe some things that uh, he certainly can can work on in his game. I think that the dropping of the football, which kind of creates the fumbles, that's certainly going to have to be something that he takes care of, whether he moves on this year or in future years. But he's had an exceptional season, outstanding year. But uh, the last two ball games have been kind of tough. Uh, this one included for Nate Davis. Now he's, he's still got plenty of time. 13-16, down 38-13. You can get yourself back in this game. Now the, the weather seems to have cleared a little bit. He said after that loss to Buffalo in the MAC championship game that he was going to return for his senior year, but uh, felt that that was an emotional moment when he said that as he gets across the 35 to the 38, tripped up by Terrell Nimmons, and he will reevaluate after he talks with some of the NFL folks about where he might go. And most people feel that it'll be a, a late first day or an early second day selection. You're talking second, third, fourth round, somewhere in there. He's a, the MAC player, the offensive player of the year. Certainly got a lot of what you like in terms of skills. And the ability to move around by himself for some time. And he's got a big time arm. Got to get that, uh, those fumbles taken care of. Trying to get Ball State its first first down of the half, but no chance there with pressure. Moten Hopkins right in his face. Boy, let's take a look at Nate Davis. Start of the game, and it started with a fumble. We thought it was a carryover from the MAC championship game. And right there, a second fumble. Tulsa did not come up with points. You see the fumble snap as he goes under center. And a fourth one that he was able to come up with. Again, so it's been a rough, rough two-game stretch for Nate Davis in terms of taking care of the football. Trey Johnson will let this one bounce inside the 15. And Ball State will down it at the 12. Tulsa on its way to a second straight GMAC Bowl victory, leading 38-13. That was last night, the GMAC Bowl Parade in Mobile. The original home of Mardi Gras it was dry last night, but not tonight. Tulsa leading 38-13. It's been raining nonstop since halftime. Tulsa's run for over 280 yards and make it 300 and more. Damaris Johnson still going. Johnson inside the 40. It breaks another tackle and then finally knocked down at the 26. He, along with Terry and Adams, has had some ball game. You talk about explosiveness. A little uh, flip, go show, show uh, flow one way and flip it back to Darius Johnson, and now it's just let the playmaking ability take over. Fabulous stuff. 62-yard run. So now 340 on the ground. As Williams takes it to the 20, and that clearly has been the X factor in this game. Tulsa's rushing attack, 347 on the ground. Terry and Adams with 190 and three touchdowns. When you get fooled, we, we mentioned it earlier, that when you start looking at the yardage and the total offense, you start thinking, well, they're just a throwing football team. No, they run the football very well. 
Another first down picked up by Jamad Williams. Well, one guy who looks forward to perhaps helping Tulsa run the football down the road is freshman offensive lineman Wilson Holloway, who is the recipient of the FedEx Orange Bowl Courage Award. He'll be honored at halftime of the BCS championship game on Thursday. He had cancer last spring, Hodgkin's lymphoma. And as Johnson's taken down, he underwent chemotherapy treatments and then he ended up playing in some games playing full played in a handful of games and then the cancer reappeared in September and in between treatments he was still playing needed more chemotherapy though and his season ended in November and he hopes to be back next year what a great story huh? yeah, a fabulous story you know, we had Tulsa at the Conference USA Championship game, they had to have him quarantine because of the severe chemotherapy treatments he was undergoing. He, he couldn't be around. As that pass is caught by Jacob Frank, and it's a, another Tulsa touchdown. Tulsa making it look easy. To Wilson Holloway's approval. Watching his teammates here for the game on the sideline. And they are making it look easy right now against Ball State. I was going to say, though, it's great since we saw Holloway last time indoors, and he really couldn't be outdoors for an extended period of time. To see him down there on the sideline, even in this bad weather, loving every minute of it and looking forward to receiving his award at the FedEx BCS Championship game, which you can hear on ESPN Radio Thursday, Florida, Oklahoma. Extra point good by Tracy. It's 45 to 13 Tulsa. David Johnson has done a great job managing the offense. Three touchdown passes for Tulsa tonight. Wednesday. BCS championship game left. Let's take a look back at how the bowl games played out by conference. The ACC going four and six. Big East four and two. Big Ten just one win. That was Iowa. Pac-10 the exact opposite. Perfect for the Pac-10. Of course, Saban and Alabama lost. Mac 0-4 prior to tonight on its way to 0-5 as uh, Tulsa from Conference USA is beating up Ball State 45-13. You look at the last two GMAC Bulls, Tulsa outscoring its opponents. Bowling Green and Ball State 108-20. Wow. Last year's win, 63-7, was the NCAA record for margin of victory in a bowl game. It was Paul Smith doing it in that game and David Johnson having a fine game in this one along with Terry and Adams as well as Damaris Johnson. Here's Gibson on the kick return for Ball State. Out across the 35 and then leveled at the 37 yard line. Tomorrow night ESPN is a special evening of basketball college at 7 Eastern with Duke Davidson followed by the NBA at 9 Nuggets Heat. Mike Tirico, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson in our announcer swap will call the Duke game. And then Dickie V and Dan Schulman on the NBA game at 9 o'clock. No Carmelo Anthony for the Denver Nuggets. Out at least three weeks with that broken hand, but still great to hear Dickie V. Nuggets playing great. And Miami bouncing back this year after a rough season a year ago. I'd like to see how many sports Dick Vitale could call over the course of the year. He could probably handle just about any one of them. Just Lewis takes bring, it to the sideline. Bring quite a bit of excitement to uh, to each and every one of them. Love watching him do basketball games. This is a new little twist, and uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Dickie V uh, doing an NBA game. Now, a lot of fans taking cover here. Glad People Stadium with good reason. Of course, of course, the band members forced to stay out there. They've toughed it out since the rain began at halftime. A few brave souls that are volunteering to be out in this weather. Lewis on the call. Are you surprised Ball State's not just throwing the ball at this point? Well, I think they're they're just trying to get something going. They've been ineffective throwing the football, so you got to try to run it. With one of your uh, better weapons in uh, McQuell Lewis. Green out on their last four drives. Now Stan Parrish named head coach at their Brady Hope left for San Diego State. After losing to Buffalo in the MAC title game, and Stan told us this week that many of the coaches on the staff will likely join 
Polk in San Diego but that Parrish is staying and got a four year deal to be the head coach. Good throw there by Davis but incomplete Hill was out of bounds. He just ran out of room and as a receiver you got to leave your quarterback about four yards from that sideline so they can fade you away from coverage. He did throw by Davis just look for a little bit more room from Darius Hill. And of course with. The Stan Parrish is higher. Will be a, a few changes in the Mid American Conference. Ron English going to Eastern Michigan and Mike Haywood, Notre Dame offensive coordinator, getting the head job at Miami of Ohio, which brings the number of uh, African American head coaches in FBS to seven. I mentioned English uh, getting the job at Eastern Michigan. Turner Gill staying at Buffalo. Mike Loxley going to New Mexico. That's a great job for Mike Haywood taking over at uh, Miami University in Ohio. I think the thing that stands out the most is you have just one automatic qualifier on that list and that's Miami. Everybody else is a non automatic qualifier school. Yeah, you lost to Washington, you lost Mississippi State, you lost Kansas State in terms of coaches going to universities that can, in my opinion, play for the national championship because it is called the BCS championship game for a reason. And you got to be an automatic qualifier in my, my mind to play in that football game. It's also keeping it on the ground, gain of about three. And at some point, you would have to think that some way, shape, or form, college football has to adopt some form of a Rooney rule, which certainly jump started things in the NFL, though it doesn't seem to be that much of a factor anymore because you're seeing a lot more black head coaches, but you're just not seeing it in college football and you're not seeing it at the highest level, the automatic qualifier level. No, and you're not, and uh, most of the jobs on that list, you look at it, and it's going to be an uphill battle for a lot of those coaches. Yeah, you're getting the opportunity, which is what you want, but you know, a lot of coaches, you look at Boston College springboarding into something else. Well, those guys, if they win at those universities, don't expect them to, to stay there long. They want to go and they want to play and coach for it all. And you have to be in those automatic qualifier type universities to have an opportunity to put realistically play for a national championship. That pass incomplete. And nobody thought Turner Gill would be able to do at Buffalo what he did and turn that into maybe an opportunity. And you think he would get some more opportunities to move up. As you look at that list there of the non automatic choir qualifier schools, who do you think of those coaches has the best chance maybe to, to take that school to the next level and get a better job? Is it is it Loxley at New Mexico? It could be. It could be Mike Haywood at Miami University. That's a, it's a, the coach, cradle of coaches type school. Some very good football coaches have come out of there. Uh, he'll be able to recruit and uh, and do well there. So I think maybe that's the, uh, the the school that I'm looking at, which will have the most success. Yale announced that uh, Tom Williams will be its new head coach. 38 year old uh, assistant with the Jacksonville Jaguars. So congratulations to him. Terry and Adams gets the first down. Meanwhile for Tulsa. And continuing to do it. <laughs> Terry and Adams. He's uh, he's going to play every bit of his senior year and play it out. Play it well at uh, at Tulsa. Boy he has had a fine fine football game. 190 or make the 203 for Adams and three touchdowns. Last year, Adams had a touchdown run, a touchdown catch, and a touchdown pass in the 63 7 GMAC Bowl win for Tulsa. Here he is again, plows forward to the 40 yard line. You know, mentioning, you mentioned uh, the African American coaches and black head coaches on that list, but uh, don't want to fail to mention that Yale. Our Tom Williams, he's a 38 year old assistant, former Jags assistant uh, for the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars. So their first in uh, programs, their program's history. So second down and six for the Golden Hurricane. 45 13, it's been all Tulsa from the get go. Big hole for Williams. Inside the ball state 45 to the 43. And this, you talk about the offensive production for Tulsa in terms of how they run the football well over 300 yards now in this ball game, Dave. And they're doing it without their best 
offensive lineman who's out with a foot injury, Justin Morsey, the right guard. They've reshuffled the offensive line, moving Clint Anderson to left guard and Kurt Puckett to right guard. Yet and still, they're still able to have that type of success on the ground. Jacob Bauer in the game at quarterback. Here's Aaron Johnson and finally Ball State makes a play in the backfield. Sean Baker in there along with Drew Duffin. It's like uh, maybe some of the younger players. Jacob Bauer is just a sophomore. Junior college transfer from Bakersfield Community College. And uh, 389 yards rushing for Tulsa in this game. Well above their season average. Bauer will stay in there at quarterback. Give to Johnson. Good second, third effort inside the 40 down to the 39. Well, obviously, Ball State's future hinges on the decision of Nate Davis and whether he returns for a senior season. I mean, Ball State is not normally in a 12-win team, and Davis had a lot to do with their success this year. If he didn't come back with losing their head coach, Brady Hoke, and Nate Davis will be a lot of questions for this Cardinal team. They lose five seniors on that starting offensive unit at Ball State. So a lot to replace. A couple on the offensive line. So, uh, some big decisions to be made in the Davis household. Bauer trying to get a hold of the ball and goes down to the 42. Meanwhile, Bauer will likely be the quarterback next year for this Tulsa team, which has a lot of young talent for Todd Graham. And with those improved facilities we talked about, you think it's it's only going to get better for this Golden Hurricane team in Conference USA. Not a given that Jacob Bauer is going to be the guy next season. They've got DJ Kenny who transferred from UT, University of Texas. He's in the mix coming in. And he's going to have a few years of eligibility, big time player and passer. Uh, in the state of Texas, so uh, it'll be exciting at Tulsa for, a for for years to come. Gus Malzahn going to Auburn, and Herb Hand uh, named offensive coordinator. He'll stay on as the line coach, also named assistant head coach, as timeout is called here by Tulsa. Well, it's all but over for the Ball State Cardinals, so the mascot packing up. But always willing to stop Andre for a photo opportunity. <laughs> We ask you how you like your steak. Wednesday night, ESPN delivers a special night of hoops with college basketball and NBA back-to-back. -back. At 7 Eastern, it's Duke Davidson with NBA announcers Mike Tirico, Jeff Van Gundy, and Mark Jackson calling the game. Then at 9 Eastern on the NBA, it's Dick Vitale broadcasting a contest with Dan Schulman, Miami and Denver following Davidson Duke and our announcer swap tomorrow night. Here's Jacob Bauer running on fourth down and eight ball came out but he was down. Spain Cosby made the play and Ball State will take over on downs with 349 to play. To give a little misdirection and sneak Jacob Bauer outside. Ball State right there and able to take care of things. So Ball State will finish the season 12 and 2, Tulsa 11 and 3. It's first ever 11 win season and second straight GMAC bowl victory. Ball State will fall to 0 and 5 lifetime in bowl games and the Mac will finish the bowl season 0 and 5 but still pretty good year for the Mac. The Mac always year in year out a solid conference. Some exciting football out of the Mac this season. Western Michigan with some talent. Buffalo, a great season winning the Mid American Conference. Everything going wrong for Ball State. Let's take a look at some bowl superlatives. We talked in the first half about Ole Miss. Great game against Texas Tech. The lowest scoring game was Oregon State knocking off Pittsburgh. Biggest upset, Utah over Alabama, and then LSU with the biggest route. Until this game, although it still looks like LSU Georgia Tech will be the biggest route for the bowl season. 
pretty good football. I'll tell you what, impressed with that Ole Miss victory over Texas Tech. Boy, did they uh, they come to play in the Cotton Bowl. Here's Corey Sykes. Now Texas with a big win last night against Ohio State. Does margin of victory impact you if you're an AP voter and you're thinking about putting Texas number one, depending on the outcome, of course, of the FedEx BCS championship game? Because obviously the winner of that game wins the BCS national championship, but the AP could possibly get a split champ. No, it just it kind of makes for a good conversation. I think the, the two programs are represented well in the national championship game, Florida and Oklahoma. Pass downfield by Davis, broken up, incomplete. I think Texas will argue that uh, you know, they beat Oklahoma in a head-to-head, -head, but it took them a little while. And a comeback against Texas, I mean, excuse me, against Ohio State from a conference that, you know, has won one bowl game this season. So a lot of people will say, well, if they are the number one team in the country, then you can make the argument that they actually should have put it on Ohio State a little more than they did last night. So margin of victory does factor in, is what you're saying? Uh, I think in a lot of eyes, yes. Uh, in mine, no, because so much time is gone between uh, the final game and the bowl game that uh, you're not the same football team. Davis hit as he throws, incomplete. It'll bring a fourth down. Does Utah's perfect season take votes away maybe from Texas? I think so. I think when you when you go through an undefeated season and play the schedule that Utah played, uh, taking care of business on the road at times during the year, uh, certainly. I mean, where did it go that, you know, a team goes undefeated and we're, now we're talking about the best one-loss team? You just line up and beat who's in front of you and you play, you have a shot at least a shot to play for the national championship. Where did it go? Ball still bouncing inside the 15 yard line. And it'll be down to the 13. Coming up next on SportsCenter, Scott Van Pelt, Neil Everett, give you all the latest news and highlights. And they'll talk about Oklahoma's top concern, the Eagles-Giants showdown on Sunday. And do the woes continue, recent woes anyway, for the Boston Celtics? Meanwhile, the Gatorade shower for Todd Graham. Up to the face, too. I mean, he saw it coming. He tried to elude it, but he got drilled at the last second. Oh, he doesn't mind. Hey, he's wet anyway. It's yeah, been this, pouring down this rain is for the last a hour and a half. wet, though, you know, with the Gatorade. <laughs> it's a sweet wet. The Gatorade was uh, colored appropriately blue, by the way, too. I don't know if you noticed that. Here's Johnson out near the first down marker. Tulsa just trying to run the clock out. A little, little slow-mo Gatorade shower. He saw he was trying to get out of the way, Andre. Didn't have the moves like he used to when he was playing at East Central University. Caught it out the corner of his eye and just a uh, little bit too quick twitch muscles don't work like they used to. He's still coaching though. Oh yeah, he's got some young players that he's trying to get some game action and you know and now it's it's about uh, getting ready for next season. Spring practice and guys that you know are coming back, get them some uh, get them some game experience here. <laughs> Johnson breaks a tackle as the first down and more. Bounced out around the 36 yard line by Alex Kniff. Here's the proper way to give a Gatorade shower. This is after Vanderbilt's Bowen, the surprise shower. It took a few seconds to sink in. This was the in, in your face. Guys, you gotta wait till his back's turned. <laughs> Oh, it feels good either way if you're a coach getting one because you know that uh, you've taken care of business your team's played the way it should have and you're ahead on the scoreboard. No penalties in the game for Tulsa 45 points 605 yards of total offense and no turnovers it has been a near perfect day offensively. 
And we were wondering how things would work out for Tulsa with Gus Malzahn calling the plays. Meanwhile, he's off to Auburn after this game as their offensive coordinator, so he's been going back and forth. But their offense was was great in yeah. this game tonight. Fantastic. Herb Hand controls the running game, and uh, they certainly ran it well. They're going to miss Gus Malzahn, though. He's a creative guy that that has a lot of imagination offensively. I think Auburn hired him one heck of an offensive coordinator. But uh, Tulsa's not going to go anywhere. They're still going to pile up points and yards. Hey, they just they just did it right there with Gus. His final Gatorade shower at Tulsa as they had the sneak attack. Aaron Johnson hit in the backfield. The 22, Aaron Johnson with the ball. On the tackle number 92. This is how you do it here, Andre. This is it. He's talking, has no idea it's coming. Boom. Oh, oh yeah. It's That's not cold, though. I mean, it's still wake like up. 60 oh, degrees yeah, it's outside. cold from, from that reaction. It's a little cold. The two guys that have coached together, won, won a lot of ball games and put up a lot of yards and points. And giving their respective universities something to be, be proud about. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. Conversation about the FedEx BCS championship game as Johnson has pushed out to stop the clock. I don't know. They didn't stop the clock, so it still runs, but more news on that Oklahoma Florida game Thursday night, which you can hear on ESPN radio. Can't wait. Can't wait for that one. Who are you picking? Right now. Ooh. You know, Florida can play a lot of different styles. If you need them to open up and, and just play you point for point, they can do that. If you want to get them in a corner and have it just have a slug fest, they can do it that way. I hadn't seen Oklahoma really win in a slug fest type game. Yeah, Florida did it against Alabama in a tough, hard nosed game. Florida. All right, I'm picking Oklahoma, Sam Bradford's final game of the Sooners. He wins a national championship and then is a top 10 NFL draft pick. Johnson tackled. Inside the Ball State 35 for the final play of the game. Tulsa with over 600 yards total offense wins its second straight GMAC Bowl. 45-13 the final score. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Sports Center is coming up next. Tune in to ESPN News for our postgame extra here in a few moments for Andre Ware and our terrific production crew. I'm Dave Pash. So long from Mobile, Alabama. Off we go now to Sports Center.